When you carry out chemical reactions, chemical reactions happen with a certain speed, what we call rate. Now, reaction rate is basically how fast does the reaction take place. Reaction rate is a measurement of how fast the reactants are consumed over time to make products. A fast reaction with a fast rate is going to take less time. The reactants will be used up faster and form products faster. A slow reaction will use up the reactants slowly to make the products over a longer period of time. Now there's a couple of ways of playing around with the rate. One of them is to have more collisions or fewer collisions. Remember, effective collisions lead to reactions. So a faster reaction would have more collisions, which means it would take less time and be a faster rate. Meanwhile, slower reactions, which involve fewer collisions over time, would take more time and have a slower rate. So how do we make more collisions or less collisions? Well, let's have a look. The first thing you can do, and this is a holdover from that little cliffhanger from the previous video, is you can play with the mechanism. You can actually mess around with the steps that the reaction has to undergo in order to form the product. You can add steps to a reaction. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to add steps? Because that's like taking a detour. You're driving down the road, going to wherever it is you're going, all of a sudden, detour! And now you've got to make a sharp left turn, and you've got to go 450 miles out of your way just to get to where you were going. Because it takes more steps, it's going to make the reaction go slower without getting used up. See, that detour is still going to be there after cars have to take it. That's a detour, an inhibitor. This adds steps, and when you add steps, it takes more time. It's like walking up steps. If they add more steps, it's going to take you more time to get there. Examples of inhibitors include paint. When you paint your house, what you're doing is you're inhibiting the breakdown of the materials of your house from the ultraviolet rays of sunlight, from being digested by things like mildew. Paint will slow down that process. Also, the enamel on your car slows down the rusting process. Many chemical reactions that are used in industry are extremely fast. In fact, they're explosively fast, including the reactions that make plastic. So what they need to do is throw in an inhibitor to slow the reaction down so it's still fast enough to make your plastic, but slow enough that it doesn't blow up your factory. Well, if adding steps makes your reaction take more time, removing steps well, if you're walking up steps and all of a sudden there's fewer steps than there were before, you're going to get to the top that much quicker. That's called a catalyst. Remember before we were talking about 546 seconds for that step to take place? We're like, what can we do to get rid of that step? This is what you can do to get rid of that step. Add a catalyst. You can actually engineer catalysts to remove specific steps and get things done the way you want them to get done. It makes the reaction go faster without getting used up. It's sort of like if you need to get from one place to another and you got a whole jumble of roads to take and then all of a sudden they build one straight road to get you there, you just cut down on a whole lot of steps. It's going to take you less time to get there. The road is still going to be there so that other people can take it. Catalysts do not get used up in a reaction. Neither do inhibitors. You put in 15 grams of catalyst, you're going to get back 15 grams of catalyst. A prime example of a catalyst is the powdered platinum that's in your catalytic converter in your car. The job of that is to remove harmful gases from getting out through your exhaust, cutting down on your emissions so that your car passes emissions and we don't have as much air pollution. The other way you can impact reaction rate is by changing the number of collisions over time. These factors can affect how many collisions particles undergo over a period of time. First, temperature because temperature is a measure of how fast the molecules are going. If you increase the temperature, they have more kinetic energy. More kinetic energy means more speed. And if there's more speed, they're going to hit each other more often, making the reaction go faster. So if you're carrying in a reaction at 300 Kelvin or 600 Kelvin, which reaction is going to happen faster? When the molecules are moving faster, you'll have more collisions because they're moving faster and a faster reaction rate which means it'll take less time. The second factor that impacts reaction rate is concentration. 
In other words, how concentrated are the particles? The more reacting particles you have, or the less space they have to move around in, you're going to have more collisions, therefore a faster rate. Now, picture a parking lot with cars in it. If I put more cars in the parking lot, I'll have more collisions. Or if I have the same number of cars and make the parking lot smaller, there's less room for the cars to move around, they're going to collide more frequently. More collisions, faster rate. That looks painful. An insurance company's nightmare. If you have a gas, then you need to take medication. Oh, I'm sorry, no, no. Uh, I didn't mean that. Well, actually, I did, because I said it. Never mind. Pressure affects only gases. When you take a cylinder and you've got a gas trapped inside, a little piston you can move, when you push down on the piston, you give the molecules less volume to move around in. When you increase the pressure, you give less volume to move around in. Therefore, the concentration goes up. You'll have more collisions and a faster reaction rate. So if you've got gases and you want to make them react faster, and you don't want to heat them up, just increase their pressure, squeeze the molecules closer together, they're going to collide more frequently because they're closer together. Likewise, if you've got a solid, the particle size will determine how fast the reaction happens. Big particles have only a little bit of exposed surface, but if we break that up, look at all that fresh surface that was hidden inside that can now react. If we break it up further, look at all that new fresh surface. The smaller the particle size is, the greater the surface area. Surface area is how much surface is exposed. The smaller the particle size, the higher the surface area, which means we'll have more collisions because we'll have more surface to collide with. Therefore, we have a faster reaction rate. The catalyst in a catalytic converter is made of platinum. Now that platinum is powdered. It's what they call finely divided platinum. If they use big chunks of platinum, the carbon dioxide gas and other pollutants that are going through the catalytic converter would move too fast and wouldn't have a lot of surface exposed to react with. But if you break it up into much smaller pieces, there's a lot more surface available to deal with the pollutants. Therefore, they'll be able to remove the pollutants faster and you'll have fewer emissions coming out of the back end of your car.